welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tony, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids. And I love reviewing curriculum. I'm also a super thrifty mom, so you'll see a lot of that on my channel too. But today I'm going to be reviewing one of my absolute favorite curriculums that we have used over the years, which is Christian Light Education's reading program. And I have used it for multiple grades and absolutely loved it. And I'm so excited to talk to you about it today. So stay tuned. So it's that time of year where you're kind of over the excitement of your school year and you may be starting to look into what we're going to do next year, at least for me. And then we're getting into that time of homeschool conventions. Actually, I'm super excited. I just found out that there's a homeschool convention, not super close, but um, about five hours away from where we live. And my friend is going and invited me, my husband okayed it. So I get to go to a homeschool convention. So I'm hoping to do a video on that pretty soon once we have that convention in March. But before I go to conventions, I always try to spend a lot of time researching and deciding which curriculum I actually want to use for, for next year. I may have a couple that I'm deciding between that I really need to see in person and but I try not to go completely open-minded because if you do who knows what you're gonna end up with I did that my first year and just kind of bought the first thing we saw it still worked fine but I've noticed over the years that um, being prepared and really doing research does help so if you are looking for a reading curriculum this is one that I really feel like I need to talk about. There's a lot of different reading curriculums out there. You probably can't go wrong with them, but this curriculum that I'm talking about today is like once your kid already knows how to read. This is gonna focus more on the reading comprehension and it's gonna teach a lot of, it does have a lot of phonics and things tied into it too, but this is not like something you would do for a kid that doesn't know how to read. This is the one I'm gonna share with you today is reading two, so this is grade two. Um, they also have, they have reading one and then it goes up to the other years. So we've used their reading levels one, two, three, and four. And then when my daughter got into fifth grade, she just wanted to try something new. So we did do something new that year, but I have never had a problem with this. I love it. It's so thorough and so good. I'm going to show you a peek inside of it in a couple minutes, but the basics, if you have not heard of Christian light education, I have done a review of their math, which is also excellent. So I will link that in the comments below. If you haven't seen that, they have a really good solid math curriculum, which is set up the same way as this. We've also used their learning to read, which is what you would use before. Obviously when they're learning to read, this is what you'd use once they have the reading down. Um, so I have reviewed that too. So check out my channel and um, in my curriculum review playlist, I can link that below too. But today we're gonna talk about reading too. Okay, so what comes in this reading curriculum is first of all, you get a teacher's guide. Some levels it has one big teacher's guide and they're really nice. This is really good quality spiral bound um, teacher's guides. I've had other ones, one of the ones we're using this year. I love the curriculum so much but the books are like completely falling apart because it's a different kind of binding. So if that matters to you, this binding is great. And the books, this has been through a couple kids and they're still in excellent condition. So you get the two teacher's guides. The other thing that you get and the way this curriculum is set apart very much from a lot of other curriculums, instead of getting one big student workbook, you get these little workbooks that are called light units. You get 10 of these and if, you, if you're familiar with theirs, it's the same setup as their math and as they're learning to read. So I just have a handful of these. I just grabbed a few to show you guys, but you get 10 of these and this is what your child works through. So they'll pull out the first one and they open it up. You write directly in this book and you grade in this book and then they have their tests and their quizzes are in this book. Everything they need is in this book. The cool thing about this that really was kind of this sense of encouragement to my kids was once they finished one light unit which is so one light unit is 15 lessons and then you take a test and then a lot of times there's quizzes throughout there too um, and you can choose whether you want to do the test and the quizzes I did like doing that I thought that was really good but the nice thing is you do 16 lessons and then you're done and you write on the back of the book when they finished it what their grade was on the test and they're done and so my kids just getting that encouragement of oh, mom, I get to start a new light unit tomorrow was like so exciting to them. Where sometimes if you have that one big book, you know, you might be like, oh look mom, I'm halfway through. This is so exciting. But this was even better. You're actually like putting that 
book away and starting a new book and they they really liked that so that was always um so exciting when somebody was starting a new light unit they loved that so you get your teacher books you get 10 light units and then you get two reading books so these two books are what have all the stories in it that they're going to read so um this one is called happy hearts and then this one is called helping hands and the way that the reason you have two teacher books is because this one is book one and this is for helping hands so this will go with this book and the first um, five light units. And then this teacher's guide will go with this book and the next five light units. So it's really easy to understand and easy to go along with the schedule and all that stuff. Before I show you a glimpse inside of it, I'm just gonna share with you a few reasons why I really love this curriculum. So obviously you can see in the name the first Thing about Christian light is it's a Christian education so it is um, I believe that it's like it's like a Mennonite curriculum I don't know if they use it in Mennonite schools or what the deal is because you can tell by a lot of the pictures I'll show you that inside but you know the ladies all wear head coverings and um, dresses and then the boys are always dressed nicely in like a button-up shirt and like nice dress pants and things like that that's like the only difference between me and them and our you know I have not seen any beliefs in here that are contradictory to a born-again believer which is what I am we go to a Baptist church I've seen nothing in here that's been like ah I don't that's crazy no it's it totally goes along with basic Christian beliefs I really love this so the cool thing is um, it says here on I think all of the light units God's light in reading so this is all based on God this is all based on just good morals. All the stories are gonna come back to like this moral of the story. So some, somebody might, you know, make a bad decision during the story and it's gonna come back to, you know, learning a lesson in the end. And I just love that, especially for young elementary kids. You know, they're learning right from wrong every day of their life and they do make bad decisions. And I think it's really good to see in the stories that you know other kids make that bad decisions these are not like you're not going to see a kid holding up a bank or something they're little you know they might take a cookie when they weren't told to so it's real light you know decisions but it still brings it back to was this wrong not every story is going to have that i mean some stories are just good sweet stories but i like that it does have that um tied in there and it's got bible verses tied in so right on the beginning of these, they each have a Bible verse on the front of the book, which is really cool. In the reading book, I'm just gonna tell you real quick what it says here, because this is a like deeper, rich reading curriculum. It's not just decoding words and making sure you can read words and, and spew back like a summary of what you just read. It's more than that. So um, I'm just gonna read you what they say their goals for reading are. It says to implant biblical principles for living, to foster a lifelong love of reading, to increase comprehension and analytical skills, which is very important, to provide practice in reading familiar words and decoding unfamiliar words, to use diacritical marks as an aid in decoding words. That is something that I didn't grow up reading those words with, the, like you see in the dictionary with the little marks and the upside down E and all this stuff. I didn't learn that as far as I can remember. So that was a learning curve when we came to Christian Light, but my kids were younger. But their language curriculum, it teaches you all those different um, symbols, which they call diacritical marks. So, but I do love that because that's gonna help them when they do get to a word in the dictionary that you know is super long, they don't know how to read it. They know what all those marks mean. So I do appreciate that. Even though it was a learning curve for both of us, they do give, um, I think in the language curriculum, and you don't have to use the language curriculum with the reading curriculum. I, I did use both at the same time, but the language curriculum had flashcards that had the little letters with the marks, like an A with two dots on top, and the kids had to learn just like you would do math flashcards. The flashcards are not a part of this program, but if that's something you wanna really dive into, you might wanna look at their language program, but we'll just talk about reading today. So the last thing is to promote swift, silent reading and smooth oral reading with full comprehension. So there are days where they're reading to themselves and then there'll be a day that they'll read to you. And that's something that I really love 
they will read their story at least once before they read it out loud to you. And I love that they're reading it out loud to me because there are some reading curriculums where the child is doing either all of it to you, which is very time consuming, if, to be honest. If you have multiple kids, I struggle to have everybody, I've got four kids, so for all of them to be reading to me every day at different times, it's hard. So I loved that there'd be a, we'd make sure they were offset enough to where when this child was doing their silent reading of their story, I'd make sure my other child was doing their oral reading that day. And then the next day they'd swap. So that way it wasn't people waiting in line for me to read to me. But I love that we do both and that when they come to me to read it out loud, they've already read the story once. And sometimes they would, my, my daughter that did this one um, a couple years ago, she would get so excited and be like, mom, this is the good part. Or like, oh mom, I love the story, this was so good. So I liked that she already was familiar with the story when she came to read it to me, which made it a little bit easier to orally read it out loud. Where I think sometimes if you just open up a brand new book that's gonna have challenging words in it and they have to read it out loud to you for the first time, it could be discouraging if mom's having to help with words, you know, every sentence or every couple sentences or something. Where this one, they've already worked through some of those words on their own. And then when they get to me, there's still words I would have to help with, but they've helped themselves learn and decode a lot of those words before they even read it to me. So I do love that. I think that's really, really awesome. Okay, so I think the easiest way to kind of explain how the lessons are set up and things like that is to show you the peek inside of the book and I'll do a little flip through so you can see how the teacher's guide is set up and then how the light units are set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and show you what this looks like inside and we'll go over all that stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna let you see what the book looks like. This is the first book, so this will give you an idea of what their reading is gonna look like right off the bat. So remember, this is second grade. So this is the Helping Hands book, and it's a nice hardback book, not too thick or anything. And then they always have a table of contents in the front where you can see all the stories that they're gonna have. Then here's an example of the first story. They always have a Bible verse at the top, which is awesome. So they've got the story title. Usually it'll have something here, like this says, why did grandma send dried onions to Nell? Just kind of a little like something to intrigue them and find out what the story's gonna be about. So we've got one, two, there's a picture there, three, four, five. So six pages for one story here. One thing that they do is when they have bigger words that may be challenging, they always have them in bold. So all those words are study words, which are words that um, they're gonna be going over in their workbook, but they're, they're bold in here. And you can see in the back of the book, they've got the study words for each story. So here, you know, we saw there's beautiful, there's dried onions, thought throw. And then if you look here, there's all those words right there. Beautiful dried onions, thought throw. And so they've got all their words there that are the study words for each story, which they're going to be going over in their workbook. But they do have a lot of really pretty pictures. I'll fix, see even hyacinth, like that's gonna be a challenging word for some second graders. But that is why if they didn't get that in their workbook, that's when mom is gonna help them when they read it out loud to her. This one is just a poem. So they do have stories and then they have poems, which I think is really cool. So here is the next one. This is um, just got a small Bible verse there. And there's, there's some more pictures throughout. Really pretty, just kind of simple, not super distracting pictures. See, there's a, an example of the boys. They're just always gonna be dressed nicely. Nothing too extreme. So there's, I'm just gonna do a quick flip through. But you can see the print is nice and large. Um, but I just love the drawing. See, there's, there's a picture of the girls so that's how you can just tell it's kind of um, I think a Mennonite based curriculum but like I said that's not offensive to me to see people looking nice there's the head covering um, on grandma so but they're beautifully rich stories they're all they're always gonna point back to God um, they're just really good really good quality stories so there's not a ton of pictures but there's enough I think to kind of keep their interest without being super distracting. For kids that do get distracted easily, um, they're not really distracting. This is the second book, I'll just show you real quick. This is The Happy Hearts, which has a Bible verse on the front too. 
Um, we've got here's the table of there's the table of contents there, and then here's their first story. So it's still good um, size. It's still good size print. You've got your Bible verse. It's got your question underneath of the title, and then I mean I think the drawings are really good, really pretty. This is not. I, I really feel like this is not overwhelming. The daughter I was telling you about, she did struggle to start reading. It was hard for her. And so I felt like this was just, it was so good. It was once she'd finally gotten reading down and really understood how to decode words and really break them down and read, she loved this curriculum so much. So this has just a lot of good stuff. And it, like I said, it does have some poems um, mixed in there, which is nice. So now we're going to look at the teacher's guide, and there's the glossary in the back. So the first book had the study words, like I told you about, but it did not have a glossary. The second book has a glossary, so they're actually able to look up when they get to one of these bold words. So like abode, it's on 248. You know how glossary works, but I'm just going to show you. So if we go to 248, we've got abode right there. You can read it in the sentence, and this is going to be helpful when it comes to their book work, which I'll show you in a minute. But then it just tells you. This is where understanding those letters and things like, you know, the, the line on top of the O or the upside down E or different things like that. This is where this is important because, you know, this is in dictionaries, so they need to understand how to use this in their daily life. Well, they have to use this in the, um, the glossary too, and it's got a definition here too. But I think that's really cool that it's teaching them how to decode these words. So unfortunately, well I guess fortunately, we did all of our books. So I don't have a blank book to show you, so you'll have to just see what it's like. But this is the light unit, so this is 206, which it would have started at 201, 202, all the way up to 206. So this is about mid-year, this one that I'm going to show you. But they're all set up the same. So section one, they're going to have two stories that they're going to read. The Lost Shoes, they're going to read it silently to themselves. And then they're going to read it out loud to mom. So that's why it's on there twice. And then this one, they're going to read it silently and then out loud. And then they take a quiz. So they're going to have these on here twice because they're doing each story twice. One silently, one out loud, and then a quiz. And then you're going to um, keep going on like that. And then it's, So then at the end is the light unit test. We've got a picture here, and then here's the pronunciation key. There are all the words that they're gonna come across and how to pronounce them, and I love that they start it, start your lesson with that. You know that right at the beginning of the book, that's where everything's gonna be. So if they come across you know, that word and they don't know how, how to pronounce it, they can go back to this pronunciation key in the beginning. So then we've got the first story they're gonna read in their book, which is The Lost Shoes. Their study words are all right here, which I showed you in the book. They are introduced these study words before they even read the story. So we've got the study words, they've got a question here using the study word, and then they have to be able to guess which of these words that means. And then this is talking basics about the glossary, because remember, the glossary was not in the first book, but in the second book, which starts at 206, the second one of these reading books that had the glossary in the back, that's when they're actually introducing the glossary. So it talks about a glossary, what it is, and then it goes through here and it tells you how to use the glossary. So that's gonna be an assignment. Use the glossary on this page to find the meanings of these words and then draw lines to it. Then we've got um, read the Bible verse to yourself three times. There is Bible memory throughout this entire book, throughout this entire curriculum, which I did appreciate. And I love that it's something that they're, they're actually memorizing it because it tells them to do it three times. Then here, it's got something, this has got language tied in. So that's why I was saying this is not just reading. So this talks about pronouns, which they may have gone over in their language. If you're using Christian Light, it should line up where it's kind of just reinforcing it, but they talk about a pronoun. Then they're gonna have some activities with pronouns here. The we remember section is what's next. That is a review page. So that is gonna talk about stuff that they've done in past books. In their past light units it should be all things that they already know how to do then at the end it's going to say read the story and which pages and I, they have throughout all these little boxes so as soon as they finish a section 
they need to check that box off so they know for themselves that they're done and so mom knows that they're done and then I just go through and check it off. So that is one whole lesson, which some people may think is a lot. Um, I My kids sometimes thought it was a lot, but I thought it was really good. So I'll just show you one more. Now this is the same, The Lost Shoes. Remember the first book was, the first story we read was The Lost Shoes, which she read silently. Then when we come to the next day, it's gonna say time for reading class. That means you're reading out loud to your mom. So I think this is probably set up for like a one room schoolhouse type of Mennonite school, Amish school type of thing, which is why a lot of times it'll say stuff like that, like time for reading class, like you're all gonna get together and read. So that's what we're just doing. That's what it means when we do that. Um, then from the story, here's the reading comprehension. So these are questions that had to do with the story that they read and they're just supposed to underline, it'll tell them exactly what to do. Then they've got number the sentences in order that they happened, which I think is great. And then here, underline each sentence, it tells you why she did not obey her mother, like what I was talking about. That's her little making a bad choice in her story. So she's supposed to underline all of those things. Underline another title that fits the lost shoes. And I think that's a cool thing too, for them to have to think, what would be another good title for this? Um, memorize your Bible verse and then say it to your teacher. So they practiced this Bible verse yesterday. Then it says um, circle yes or no to answer each question. So it is four pages, it's usually three or four pages of work. So this one's three pages of the day that you're doing it together. So there's another thing about tying in the pronouns. And then here's the we remember. So that's one lesson. Now I, since we did this, our quizzes are not gonna be in here but there would be a quiz and a test in the book too. I also got a glossary in the back of the light unit, which is great too. So that's got all the words that they might need. There's a self check at the end of the book. I usually did not have my girls do it. If it's something that you feel like your kid is maybe still struggling, it might be a good thing to do the self check. It's basically like a pre-test. And usually I could tell by grading their papers whether they were ready for the test or not. So I rarely ever had them do the self-check, but that's what it was. It's just like kind of a pre-test. And um, so that kind of gives you an idea of what the test would look like. It's usually just a couple pages. It's gonna be what they've been working on throughout the week. See, we're talking about pronouns, reading these words to your teacher, underline the syllable that's the loudest in each word. And then on the back, it says, Circle the bold word that makes the sentence true. Number the words in alphabetical order. That's something they would have learned in the previous light units. And then write words to complete the Bible verse. So that's where their Bible verse is tied in. They do this on the test. They do this on this self-check too. And then here, they also, it says to use the glossary. So that's part of the test because they're, they're learning that in their book. So you're using this glossary here that they would match these up and then they'd circle something in each word and then mom scores it. So that's something you can do or you don't have to do. But that is basically what a light unit looks like. They're all gonna be pretty much exactly the same, obviously just progressing throughout the year. Okay, so we are gonna look at the teacher's guide, which is pretty great. So this is the book one teacher's guide for the helping hands. It's gonna have table of contents, introduction to reading that you could read through. It actually goes through and tells you how to use the light units because there are little symbols throughout that um, in the teacher's guide that you need to know what those mean. Like here they've got activities that require teacher involvement, activities that need to be written on the board. You'll get used to those, but just in the beginning so you know what that means. Like that little book that, that was in the light unit that said uh, time for reading class, that means oral reading assignment. It's something they're gonna do with their teacher. So those are just symbols that you can go through. It goes through all those things that you need to know. It talks about evaluating reading skills. So it's got a lot of information packed in here. It talks about how to score and grade this curriculum. It talks about how to teach this course. It goes into very in-depth descriptions of how to do this. So if this might overwhelm you, maybe you're new at homeschooling and you've never taught reading before, this takes you, walks you, holds your hand and walks you through this and it's really not a big deal. It talks you how to conduct the oral reading class, it talks about the poetry selections, all that, which is really great. This is another really helpful 
page. It's got all the sounds and diacritical markings. Like I said, if you're like me, I did not learn these growing up. I don't know, I don't remember any of these. Like stuff like this, the, um, I'd never seen an upside down E until I started teaching it. I mean, I've probably seen it in the dictionary, but I didn't know what it meant. But if you go through, it's got all the different things that you need to know and in consonant blends and all this stuff is in the front of the teacher's guide, which is awesome because you can just flip to it if you don't know it. And don't be afraid to tell your kid. I told my kids, I didn't learn this, so I'm learning it with you. So if they'd be like, mom, what does that mean? I'm like, let's look it up together because I'm not sure. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is what the teacher's guide would look like for the first lesson. So it says re reading 201, section one. Um, it's got your lesson directions for pages one through three in the, t in the child's light unit. The coolest part is, here's your light unit and your page that the, your page that the child is gonna be working is right here. The exact picture of what your child is gonna be reading in their light unit is here. I love that. It is the easiest curriculum I've ever seen to be able to grade because it's not trying to, it's not just like numbers and then you have to look through and match up the numbers and I don't know, grade the stuff. It's really annoying sometimes when they're like that. This has the entire thing. You can see what, when they have a question about, mom, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. You've got a picture of their workbook, all this stuff. You've got what the correct answers will be. Sometimes, as you can see right here, it says answers will vary. So there will be some, like this one says my name is, obviously it's gonna be different for each child. So sometimes it'll say answers will vary, but throughout this, it's always gonna have the child's answers in here. And that is honestly one of my favorite things about this curriculum. That's mostly what I used it for. If you have super independent children that are maybe strong readers, you may only use this book to grade. You may only be using it, which we got to the point where I was really only using this to grade and I still loved it as a grading book. It was awesome, but your, if your child needs actually needs taught step by step, then it's great for that too. But it can work for both scenarios. So it's got your objectives of what you're going to be doing. It's got class preparation, which will say make flashcards or of direction words. Um, they will explain how to do that. This will tell you here, read a true story about, so they've got the story right here that you're going to be reading to your child. You're just going to go down this page, do exactly what it says. This one, there's more directions. This is something it will always say new if it's a new concept, a new thing that they have not learned yet. So this is something that you will want to teach unless your child is able to just look in here and learn it on its own. My girls were usually like that where they were able to just look on the page that was given to them and they really could kind of just understand it. It was a very independent curriculum except for the few things they needed me for. But if you are teaching step by step, you're gonna teach that. All these things, you're just gonna to read to yourself. It gives you exactly what you need to do as the mom or the dad, whoever is teaching this. Um, then it'll tell you like right here, it's gonna say students should do this page independently. See how they can follow, see how well they can follow directions. Make sure they know which direction is right and which is left. So you may want to sit there and make sure they're doing this right in the beginning, but you will get probably you will get to where they're able to do this quite independently. Then this is the second one. So there's the pictures of the pages that they're going to be doing. You know exactly what they're going to be doing. It tells you what you're going to be teaching, the new thing that you're going to talk about, which sometimes like for this, it says vowels and consonants. So it says review the alphabet. You just go over the alphabet with them. Discuss which letters are vowels and which are consonants. Point to the letters on an alphabet strip. Ask your student to call out vowel or consonant as you point to the letters in random order. Remind students that every word needs a vowel. Very simple. This is not a long um, ex exercise that you have to do together. This is pretty easy and straightforward, but it teaches them so much. And I just love that it's not just how to read. It's not just reading comprehension. It's a lot of other stuff. It's a lot of language and phonics tied in also. It's just such a rich curriculum. So. I just really love it. Here's the quiz. So this is how the quizzes work. I will show you since I didn't have a blank quiz to look out, to look at. This is what a quiz looks like. So that is the picture of their quiz, um, quiz one there. And then that, 
So the, this quiz is three pages. So this is what the other part would be. They're going to read this story. They're going to have to answer questions to get comprehension to see if they get it. They've always got something with the Bible verse there. Then here, circle the words, the correct word for each picture, write down your vowels. So that's your quiz. Then you grade it and you move on. So um, it's pretty straightforward, but it's just really good and really rich. And so that's the, the teacher's guide, which I think if you have any question about, do I need the teacher's guide? Yes, you do need to buy the teacher's guide. In my opinion, um, it just makes things so much easier. In the back, you've got a lot of different just helps and things and stuff that you might want to go through. There's an index in the back if you're... I did use the index quite a bit when there would be times where my daughter would ask me, you know, or she would be, let's say she was hung up on homophones and wasn't getting it. It was something I knew we'd already learned, but I couldn't remember which light unit we use it in. So let's say she's in light unit 206 and I knew we learned it, but probably in another light unit, you can look in here and look up homophones and then realize, okay, we learned that in 204. So then you can flip through it in your teacher's guide and reteach that lesson if they need it retaught. So that was actually really helpful because that's the only downfall I would say of using these light units instead is that if there's a concept that they did learn, you know, once you're done with this, you move on to the next one. And if that concept that they learned, they kind of forget about, or they're just not getting it or whatever the problem is, they're now working in this light unit. And if it was in this light unit, they're going to have to go back to this one to figure out what was wrong. Or mom can just go back in here and reteach it however she needs to. This was just, we never had any issues with this curriculum. I just loved it so much. It's got scriptural truths and character traits in the back. Um, it's just really good. There's the scripture verse for each story. And then they've got the light units in the back. Um, oh, these are alternate light units, which are really, really helpful. If your child takes a light unit test and they get a grade that you're not happy with, whether they fail the grade or they get a C and you think they could have done better or they completely get every answer wrong. So you can photocopy. Here is light unit test 201. This is the answer key for the light unit test one. Photocopy this. Give them the test, let them retake it as if the other one never even happened. And we've done that in math before. We've had to do that. And I love that option to where they're not stuck with a failing grade just because they completely forgot how to do something. You can go over it, reteach it. That's the beauty of homeschooling. You can let them retake this test. Make sure they really get it. I say encourage your kid and let them keep the, the better test. So that is a look at the teacher's guide the other teacher's guide that i showed you is going to be the same exact thing except it's based on the second set of light units and the second book okay guys so that is my review of christian light education's reading i really love it my girls have just gotten such a rich education through using their reading through using their language also through using their math i really love this curriculum i feel like it's christian light is one of those that i don't hear a lot about when people say hey what reading curriculum do you recommend? They're not always the top name, but they're so good. And I feel like they're underrated for how good they are. So I really encourage you to look into this, go on their website and look at some of the samples that they have on there. Another thing I'm gonna tell you, a lot of those ones that everybody does recommend when they ask, you know, those well-known names, they're like hundreds of dollars. Let me tell you how much this is. This is not a lot. So for the reading, for the readers, these are $10 a piece. So you've got $20 right here for these two readers. These, for 10 of these, these are $31 for 10 light units, okay? And then the teacher's guides are $9.50 a piece. So we've got um, about $20 here, $20 here, $40, and then what did I say this was, $30? So like $70 for an entire year of reading curriculum where sometimes a lot of them end up being like over a hundred, sometimes more than that. Here's another thing. If you have multiple kids, this is why it's been cheaper for me over the years. We have four kids. You only buy the teacher's guide once. You only buy these once. So you know what you're buying every year? is $30 worth of books. That's it. These are like $3 a piece. $3.10 a piece or something. Um, 
you can't beat that. So it's it's not a big upfront cost, and then it's a very much smaller you know upkeep of a cost as the years go on. If it's something that you really love and you're going to continue using, it's super affordable. So I'm really excited to start. We didn't use this this year, but I'm going to be using the reading next year with a couple of my kids, and I'm really excited. The nice thing is, I already have all this stuff, so all I have to buy are these light units in the middle. So. My husband will be happy about that. <laughs> Saving money is always good. If you have any questions about Christian Light, about their reading, or about any of their other curriculums that I've used, um, leave me a comment in the comments below. Let me know if you've used theirs before, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I really, truly love this. I am not sponsored. I didn't mention this in the beginning. I'm not sponsored in any way. This is just my opinion. I just love this and would recommend it. And I've been homeschooling for seven years, and this is like the best reading we've used so far, I would say. I love it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That always encourages me to know that um, I'm doing a good job. I hope this is helpful for you. I always want to help you guys. That's my goal in this, is to make everybody just a little bit more aware of things that maybe not other people are talking about. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have not already subscribed, make sure you do so you're notified when one of my other videos comes out. I do videos every single week and I will be reviewing more curriculum as this curriculum season that keeps coming up on us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and thanks for watching. See you next time.